Uh, thank you very much, Right Honourable Speaker, for giving me this opportunity. Right Honourable Speaker, the issue of human rights should be a common good. In the 60s, the people who were complaining about human rights abuses were basically people who were in the opposition. Then it came to the 70s. You had another regime in power. And the people who were being hunted, sometimes even killed, were those who were opposed to that regime. Then it came to the 80s. Those who complained were actually the ones who were in opposition, most specifically the Democratic Party, and those who were sympathetic to the NRA. In 1986, colleagues, the NRM regime established what we call the Odell Commission to investigate abuses of human rights from independence. For those of you who are familiar with that report, you would know what happened. This is not an era to talk about people disappearing without trace. We shouldn't. This is not a debate we should be having. And I don't want anybody to use this debate as a political spear to achieve a political purpose. But I don't want anybody also, in my view, to have a political shield because what eventually becomes a victim are the people of Uganda who are vulnerable. So can we address all the partisan interests in this color and address the issue? And if we do that, really we will live in a better country tomorrow. Why would we start talking politically when somebody out there is complaining about a lost child, a lost son, a lost husband. And I am here calling myself a parent, and I'm not feeling the pain of that parent. I'm not feeling the pain of that child. Colleagues, these are not the issues to joke about. But when a debate like this comes, we are looking for solutions. We are looking for solution to the challenge. And I would like to thank both sides of the aisle now that we seem to become, and let us discuss the solutions to the challenge we may be having. One, in the lead of opposition statement, he's complaining about three things. The first one which I read is about pre-detention without trial. Government. What can we do about it? What does the law say? Can you detain somebody without trial beyond 48 hours? So where should be the controversy be? Because it is constitutional. Do we have a constitutional order? So that is an area which, where we should all agree. If there are people who have been detained with the trial beyond the constitutionally mandated hours, those government should undertake to have them released unconditionally. And if they committed offense, however grave the offense is, then they will be subjected to the a due process of the, the law. What distinguishes civilized societies, colleagues, is us acting within the law and uncivilized people acting outside the law. That's what distinguishes us. So that should not be an issue for even right on Osaka for us to debate and even our emotions rise high. Two, I see the right on law suggesting that there should be a judicial commission of inquiry. I have had the opportunity to look at the law. That is a prerogative of the government. Let them examine what is here, and if it warrants, then they have that opportunity. 
Because right honorable speaker, we cannot as parliament resolve to create a judicial commission of inquiry because of the constitutional limitations we have. It would require resources, and once it is resources, then you cannot do it because it offends the constitution. So, let the government listen, and then say, well, in the circumstances, it, does this matter require a judicial commission of inquiry or not? Two. Three. The right to know the leader of opposition is suggesting to set up a select committee. We shouldn't have regrets in our own committees. We already have a, a, a committee on human rights. It's already in place. It's only under circumstances where we have not, we don't have a committee specifically provided for that we can resort to ad hoc and select committees. As of now, right honorable speaker, colleagues, let us have faith in our own committees which are in place. Because that's what the rules say. These matters can be handled by the Human Rights Committee and then we can report. We don't have to be every other time establishing commissions of select committees. That means we have no faith within our own committee. In any case, right honorable speaker, where are you going to get these members who are not from this committee? If you, have, you don't have faith in them, in these ones who are here, and they all belong to different committees. So are we going to get members outside? And the people who are on these committees actually were designated by both sides. The opposition designated members of that committee, and the government side also designated members. So we have committees in place who, which can discuss and investigate these matters which are still pending. We don't have to be establishing another select committee. Right on our speaker, there is this other issue which the... Um, if there are compensation, I, I see compensation uh, on page, page three. What should be the problem? I thought the government had already taken that decision. I don't know why you were even debating it. Because the president came out clearly that if there are people who lost their lives unlawfully, then government is going to compensate their families. So the issue is, have those been compensated or not? And if they have not been compensated, then the government should undertake to follow up what his excess the president promised the country. We don't have to be debating so much about whether they should be compensated or not. Did they lose their lives unfairly during the riots? If they did, then they can be compensated in accordance with the law. And government has already taken a stand on that. So, I expect the Minister of Justice... Uh, Honorable Hon Katron, maybe just on compensation issues. Uh, and I think uh, AG's office is in line with what the president said. They've compensated some people and others are still under nego negotiation. And I wouldn't want this document to be laid on the table because it, it will expose these people. But we can share it with the, with the leader of opposition. Thank you very much, Right Honorable Speaker. Lastly, Right Honorable Speaker, it's about the issue of the army court. It's quite controversial, army courts trying civilians. But this matter is in the Supreme Court. The issue is in the Supreme Court. We cannot be prosecuting a case here and the courts of law prosecuting the same case. We can't. We are going to cause a conflict of institutions of government. We are trying to conflict with each other on who has the money to do what. Honourable, in the members, case, Honourable members, in that aspect, in that prayer, that would amount to sub -judice. And I'm happy that uh, my... Say <laughs> that sub, -judice, sub -judice can only be de determined by the speaker, and I'm determining that issue is amounts to sub -judice. 
right when I was sick, and now that you've determined, I can't even go beyond so, what I want to say. But at the end of the day, there is a case of the Honorable Kabe Ziruka. His content. Right on over something like that. Kaba Ziruka. Oh, right on our speaker. That reminds me of a joke with the, my friend Jenota Fide. He was seated and somebody said, I, I want Cham Sapat. And he was, why doesn't he put S in the right place and CH in the right place? So that name, which uh, my Kava, Kava Ziguruka, is already the Supreme Court. And the issue there is whether the military courts have got mandate to try civilians in the court march. Until that has been determined, I can't ask, I mean, we discuss it to what end? What are we going to resolve? That they have or they don't? Do we have that mandate? We can only have that mandate if we are changing the law. But even that to come to the floor, as long as that case is, has not been determined. I mean, in my view, like the Honorable Right Speaker uh, rules rightly, it will be sub -judice. So it is a very difficult subject, but we have no choice as of now. Let us await for the decisions of the Supreme Court, then can one or the other discuss. I want to thank you very much for your speaker.